All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, let me introduce my guest today. So you know Dwayne, but you don't know his wife, Shanika. So welcome Dwayne and Shanika Beckford Allen. They're newly married with five beautiful children. And together they're building their financial services and photography business. Dwayne is also a talented poet. And guess what, everyone? We're gonna be blessed tonight with a Valentine's special at the end of the show. So stay tuned, you don't wanna miss it. So Dwayne and Shanika, welcome to One Word E Talk once again. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Welcome everyone, thank you. Thanks for having us again. Awesome. It gives me pleasure to introduce my second guest, Andrew and Julian James to One Word E Talk. They are a couple of bold, eternal optimists who believe in old school love. So I guess we're gonna get some old school love tonight. <laughs> all right. They don't claim to have all the answers, Not, none of us do, about love and marriage, but through their podcast, Love James Podcast, they hope to share perspective that will help to inspire healthy growth and evolution in relationships. Now, Andrew and Julianne has three beautiful daughters. They've been married for 11 years, Anne has known each other for 19 years. Andrew is an ordained minister, and together with Julianne, they have counseled dozens of couples into and through marriage. So ladies and gents out there, you can ask questions today. We'll be taking live questions. So don't be afraid to put your questions in the comments box. All right, guys, are we ready to get started? Welcome, Andrew and Julianne. Thank you for having us. Thank We're you. glad to be here. Thank you so awesome. much. Okay, now viewers, you know I love when you're engaged. So before we get started, my first question going out to you is, how would you define love? So go ahead and share that with us in the comments box. How would you define love? And then I'm gonna go right over to, I'm gonna start with Andrew and uh, Julie. How would you define love? Wow. <laughs> many ways to define love. <laughs> yeah, many ways. Love. I mean, we can go, you know, love is patient, love is kind, <laughs> you know, it is all of those things, but I think love is, is sacrificial. Yes, I think it's, uh, we would describe it as an exercise in faith. So love is a faith-based choice that you make, not a feeling at all. Um, sometimes feelings do come into play, but love is an exercise of faith. All right. Love is an exercise of faith. Yeah. Mark that one. Okay, <laughs> over to you, Duane and Shanika. How would you define love? <laughs> um, you, you want to take this one? You want to... No, no, you take it first. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I agree with um, Andrew and Julianne in that it's a choice. I think every day you choose, despite what it looks like, feels like, smells like, sounds like, you make a choice, conscious choice, an intentional choice every day to love that person or just to love in general. Wow. All right, so we've heard the, the various uh, definitions of love. I'm gonna go to the audience. Well, Sharon said that love is not selfish. And Esme said that the agape love, it's sacrificial. So we're here some common theme of how we define love. So I like to go to the Bible and always look and say, well, how is love defined? And I know, Andrew, you tossed out a couple of the words. And so when I define love, I define it within the context of the agape love. It means that it defines God's immeasurable, incomparable love for humankind. And it's a divine kind of love that comes only from God. Like, man, really, that love comes from God. It's perfect. It's unconditional. Sacrificial, yes, as we have heard. It's pure. And as children of God, love is the most authentic test of genuine faith, as I believe that Julianne had mentioned. And if we go to Ephesians 13 and we look at the definition of agape love, then it's patient, it's kind, it does not envy or boast, it's not arrogant, it's not rude, it doesn't insist on its own way, it's not irritable or resentful, bears all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things, and love never ends. So let's see what Natalie had to say. Natalie said it's an exercise of faith and patience. That's correct, Natalie. And um, hey, Anto, how are you? And then Sofa says love is shared, dedication, honor, and respect. All right, so we're getting all the words building up that foundation of what love is. But Andrew and Julian, I want to start off with you. You mentioned that you had a seven year long journey to find <laughs> each other. 
what does finding each other means and why did it take you so long to find each other? Yeah. I know she's going to look to me because I was the one that was doing most of the finding and the waiting. <laughs> but um, find, the seven-year journey to finding each other was really uh, about me finding myself, me getting to a place of understanding who I am, um, who, how I was designed, and the type of person that God has designed for me to go on that journey with. Um, and so, you know you get convoluted with media and movies and R&B songs of, you know, what love is. And when you, when it's not that toxic, uh, I want to break the windows of your car mm -hmm. type of love, you think, love. yeah, <laughs> love, you think that that's not, that's not what you want. want. Mm -hmm. When you come across somebody who things become easy, they're, they're, things flow, um, there's an iron sharpening iron, there's a there's an encouragement, there's a building up, there's a there's a covering um, and, and a supporting and a strengthening. And then you realize, well, well this is not what I see in the movies, mm -hmm. but this is what this is what love is and this is what God wants for me. And so it took me some time to, you know, um, unlearn and relearn and see her again for the first time and realize I had you waiting in the sidelines because I knew when I met her. <laughs> right from the beginning, I Absolutely, knew, yes. but I wasn't, you know, I, I was, I was bombarded with all these other thoughts. And so, you know, just spending time with God and, 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 you know, I, I remember having a journal, just journaling out all of that junk from myself and getting to a place of realizing and seeing the God in her and, 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 and choosing for her to be the person that God is going to love me through. Yeah. It yeah. took a while, but we got there. <laughs> so was it, was it the same for you, Julian? Um, it's interesting. My experience uh, in meeting Andrew, the very first conversation we had with each other, it was just a friendly conversation. He was inviting me to be part of a show that he was doing. And he actually, the conversation ended up lasting four or six hours. We're not too sure, somewhere in between there. Um, and at the end of the conversation, he said to me, look, I know I'm in a situation right now, meaning that he was in a relationship. And he said, but wait for me. And it was quite interesting because um, coming into that stage of my life, I had said a very silent passing prayer to God. I said, Lord, I don't need to know, marry him right now, but I just need to know that there's somebody that you are preparing for me. And so I, when I reflect on you know, the, the 19 years of our relationship, I realized that God answered that prayer. So even though there was that seven year waiting period, I realized that God was showing me that there is indeed that somebody but we had to do a, a sort of working through. So just as much as he had asked me to wait for him, I didn't do the most excellent job of waiting. Um, but during that seven year period, we did develop a really honest, authentic friendship. We got the chance to see each other in relationships with other people. Um, we got the chance to get to know each other without the, you know, the sort of lurking, wanting to be in a romantic relationship with each other, we got to see like real honesty from each other and I, I, other. And I think that really has served us well in our, in our marriage. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. Those are some key points. Um, I want to ask a question. I want to stay, stick with you. I, I'll stick, go to Duane a little. I want to ask you though, because we have a lot of viewers that, that I know that's out there who are actually hoping to be in a relationship, hoping one day to to um to get married. One of the things I've often heard them say is, where do I find someone? How do I find someone? And the other thing I hear from them is, you know what, I'm too mature and I don't have time to play around. If <laughs> someone came to your to your business for counseling and that's what you heard from them, what would you say to them? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll just start and I and I know you'll speak about this, but I think um finding someone I think the first uh, priority needs to be finding yourself and finding your purpose. I think everything that you need to accomplish um, greatness in life and to become everything that God has designed you to be starts with you discovering yourself. And I think that person who's meant to share the journey with you can only be found along the path of you seeking out um, God's will and God's best for your life. So, you know, it starts with purpose. And I know that's, no, that's you know, good. Andrew's very passionate about purpose. Um, so, you yeah. know, you can and add I, to that. I'm not going to even add to it. I'm just going to summarize it as you find your partner on the path to purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. You find your partner 
on the path to purpose. Yeah. Okay, everyone, you got to tweet that one out. That's, <laughs> That's And I, I just, I just say um, the second part of your question, you know, about mature people who are saying, I don't have time for it. I think we get lost in relationships when we allow a lot of ambiguity to exist. Um, and I think it's it's not something that you have to um, subject yourself to. I think you need right. to be really intentional about, you know, when you are exploring relationship with other people, you have to be really intentional about asking the direct questions. A lot of times people fall into the trap of not wanting to be direct because they don't want to push somebody away. But sometimes that's what you need to do. And if your directness and your honesty ends up pushing them away, then you need to take that as God's sign that this is not the person, that's not the partner that you, you need. Yeah, exactly. Because you have to trust that God is leading you and he is directing you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Over to you, Duane and Shanika. Hmm. Each have your own personalities. As a young couple, newlyweds with five children, what has been the most challenging time for you and how did you deal with conflicts in your relationships? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. It was... Um... We talked about this before too, because obviously we just got married and everything is still new, but our parenting skills is one of the biggest um, obstacles for us in our relationship. And having, I've been a single mom for 23 years. So my oldest is 23, then I have a 13 year old and I have a six year old. So now with Dwayne moving in, and he gets to see it from the outside of how I am with my children. And, but what I appreciate about him is when he sees something and if he doesn't agree with it, it's never, he never comes at me in any hard way. He, he comes at me and has that conversation. And that's what I love about him is because it's not, he doesn't come down on me about it if I make wrong decisions or if I'm dealing with something wrong, he just, says what he feels and then also explains why so that I can understand it. So, but again, because we look at things differently, I felt like things like that was gonna be an issue, but in, in a way, because we communicate so well about it, you know, it it's, <clears throat> but that's like the only thing I could really pinpoint when we were thinking about it. Yeah, I, I honestly, I think the word conflict for us isn't really, I wouldn't say, not say that it doesn't exist, but because we literally talk about everything and we literally pray about everything, there's not really a lot of room for negative energy between us because we don't let stuff fester and we don't, there is a, what I would call a safe space for us to speak our mind and, and, and share how we're feeling and know that it's never coming from a place of, I'm trying to get at you or I'm trying to say that you're a, a bad person or a bad mom or nothing. She always knows that it's coming from a place of, I want us to get better. So she can say whatever she needs to say to me. And I know that it's her wanting to see the best version of me. And she knows when I come to her, it's that I want to see the best version of her and ultimately the best version of each other. So I think because we have that open conversation and, and, and much like Andrew and Julianne, we are friends first before anything else. So we have that established connection of being able to just be real with each other. So it doesn't really leave a lot of room for negative energy that you know leads to conflicts. Wow, excellent, excellent. And you said one key word there that I picked up and it's really about communication. So let me, let me just go to the audience and see what they're saying. So Shirley says, love it, resonates. In pursuing purpose, you find a partner. And Cheryl says, you find your partner on your part of purpose. Yes, the same thing. And Howard says, amen, communication is like blood vessels. That's a, that's a great way to put it forward. Um, I just want to add, though, because there are couples who are challenged and there are couples who does have, you know, disagreements. And even now within, you know, given that we're locked down and, you know, we're seeing each other 24 seven, which is not the norm. We're not used to that. There are couples that are sometimes challenged, but I want to look at it from the perspective of the Bible. And there's two quick Bible verse I want to leave with you on that question. How do you handle disagreement? And I think we'll talk more about it um, with the Love James podcast team. Ecclesiastic 7 verse 9, it says, do not be quick in your spirit to become angry or for anger to lodge in the heart of fools. And what this means, simply put, is that only fools will entertain anger. Mm 
And only fool will allow anger to stay alive in his bosom until it makes the person, pushes the person to take revenge. But a wise man, on the other hand, will cast out the anger out of his heart as quickly as he would coals of fire. So there's a difference between do you allow the anger or do you allow the disagreement to stay and to stay and to fester? I'm sure you've heard kick him to the curb and he's sleeping on the couch tonight, right? We, we've all heard those terminologies. He's on the couch tonight. Well, you know what? Ephesians 4 verse 26 to 27 said, be angry, not, and do not allow yourself to go into sin and do not let the sun go down on your anger and here's why we don't want to give any kind of opportunity to the devil so as you know as the couples have talked about it get to that place where you're communicating get to that place where you're hearing the other person and don't let the night come and the morning come and you're still angry and you put him or you put her on the couch normally i know it's a guy who goes on the couch <laughs> right yeah all right so, <laughs> hey i'm just speaking the truth you know mm -hmm. all right. so right. Anna and julie julianne back to you some of the issues that tend to impact marital relationships it could be finances it could be lack of communication as as, as we mentioned that you know with with um with Dwayne and Shanaka, they've got good communication. It could be house chores. It could be as simple as whose who's day is it to cook? Whose day is it to do the laundry? Whose day is it to pick up the kids? How may couples fight fear during disagreements? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we try to share with couples with respect to resolving conflict is to make sure that there are some rules of engagement. Um, you need to very early on in your relationship, make sure that you're laying the foundation or the framework around which you'll fight. Because we know when we get married that disagreements will happen. There will be some fights. There will be some contention. You're bringing two individual lives together. And so there is some friction uh, created by that. But you need to agree. First, you need to enter this agreement or this, this relationship, you, understanding that we're on the same team. So we're never against each other. That's not the goal. We are on this journey of marriage together because we're on the same side. Right. And so if we are going to fight, we need to have some ground rules for the way that we will fight, what we will say and what we won't say. Um, with some couples we've shared, you know, have a code word. If, if, if the thing is getting too hot and too intense, have a code word that you can agree on that you can say, you know what? uncle i'm crying uncle this is too much i need a moment we need to you know come away from this conversation and revisit it later um for andrew and i very early on we established divorce is not a word we're going to throw around we're not going to utter it it we're not going to give it any room or any space in our arguments we will never threaten each other with divorce and that's one of our rules of engagement so i think it's helpful if early on in, in the relationship and in the marriage you can set those ground rules and 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 hold yourselves accountable to not crossing those lines. Yes. Excellent, yes. excellent. excellent. I, I like that. Setting some ground rules. You know, the code word. That that's a yeah. that's a good one. The code word. So mm -hmm. when they hear the code word, they know time out, time yeah. out. <laughs> yes. and, and and it's very important too. be, you know, just having default reactions, default behavior. So when you know that you're getting to that point where you could be triggered into certain action, you know that default, this is not where we're going. Default this is not what we intend to, to do. Yeah. And then let's look at it from, from what God word says, Colossians 3, verse 12 to 14. It says, as God chosen ones and the holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, which means if you're wrong, just we say, just say you're wrong. There's just yeah. nothing wrong with saying I'm wrong, right? Get a get yeah. rid of the pride. Be meek. Be patient. Because maybe it's we're you know one one spouse could be communicating something that the other doesn't understand. Be patient in ensuring that during that communication you bring that person to a total understanding. And the Bible says, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another. Forgive each other. And here's why forgiveness is so important. Because God has forgiven us. So we yeah. too have to forgive. And that's not even a, a nice to have or 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 um you can do it if you want to. As children of God, it is a command. It is a command that we should forgive. And then above all, put on love. Because love binds everything together in perfect harmony. So whether in a, in a marital relationship or whether you're courting, let love 
be your foundation. Let love be your foundation. All right, guys, let's be very real, okay? We've got okay. kids. Mm -hmm. kids. We've got work. We've got our own personal goals. How do you nurture, grow, keep the romance and fun, sustain love in a relationship? How do you do that? Let me go to Duane and Shanika first. <laughs> I'm glad you went to them first. <laughs> <laughs> Give you some time to think about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I think it's putting in the time. And again, it goes back to communication. Um, the one thing we learned in our in our uh, marriage counseling is to set in those dates. You know, if we're going to have date nights every Friday to do so. I think it's different now because, of course, COVID and, and everybody is home a lot more. Like, Dwayne works from home. I am, like, I have a little bit, like, my schedule is all over the place. But the fact that we are with each other all the time and we make sure we put that time in, then those are key things. Like Valentine's, it's not something that both of us, are, it's just another day to us, but to put in that time on a weekly basis to make sure that we have a movie night, that we go for our walks, that we, you know, we do our devotions every morning. We we read together. So like those things just make up for it. Even if we do miss a date night, every morning we're doing devotions together. Every night before we go to bed, we're doing the same thing. We're praying together. So those little things just bring you closer together and just build that bond between each other, but especially putting God at the forefront of it. Right. Exactly. So that's what I would say. Exactly. Dwayne, what, what do you have to say? <laughs> You know, a smart, a smart man agrees with his wife. So <laughs> I agree with my wife. And I think she's a cop out. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I, honestly, all fun and jokes aside, I think we are very intentional, almost without even trying mm. to daily engage. And again, because our foundation is friendship, it's actually not hard. Right. I know for a lot of couples, they have to really actually be intentional about making that time for each other and putting in that effort. But because our core is friendship and because we are we do spend so much time together like i enjoy being around my wife you know you talk to some couples and some people and they're like you know what i don't always enjoy my, my spouse's company but i enjoy being around here we're always joking cracking no matter what we're doing we could be in the kitchen doing dishes or we could be in folding lawn whatever it is we're always laughing joking engaging each other so it's very easy for us to maintain that because it just comes natural for us Right, right. Okay, let, before before I go over to you, um, Andrew and Julianne, let, let me ask the audience, how do you keep the romance and fun in your relationship? And how do you nurture and grow your relationship? So go ahead and just put put me some answers in the comments. With, with all the business of life, you know, your kids, the, your own work, your own personal goals, how do you nurture and grow and keep the romance and fun in your relationship? How do you sustain love in relationship? Because here's why, guys, we have to be intentional about it. Mm -hmm. We can't just leave it to default. We have to be intentional. But I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to go over to Andrew and Julian. <laughs> How do we do this? Well, I think, I mean, that's a key word, right? Intention, uh, being intentional. Um, for me, it's a continual pursuit. You know what I mean? Like when I was trying to win her over it was always you know looking at oh baby looks sweet yeah. man i like that outfit you know and, and and that doesn't stop you know so even though we're in going to year 11 going to 12 it's like it's not uh it's the same thing you know if i'm she's in the kitchen and i pass by her and i might brush her a certain way you know what i mean just to let her know hey i see you and 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 you know, she puts on the outfit and you correct me if I'm wrong. Like, this is what I do. I, I tell her how beautiful she is every day. I tell her how much I love her. You know, she does her styles of hair. She cuts her hair. She grows her hair. She colors her hair. Whatever she wants. Baby, you look great. Yeah. You look nice. You know what I mean? And and, and I think that that keeps, uh, you know, it keeps that kind of, you know, she recognizes that he's still is checking me. You know what I mean? And, and so it makes intimacy so much more easier because it's not nothing that we had to work up to because, you know. Yeah. And I would just add that, you know, we prioritize laughter and I think laughter is underrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, um, you know, sometimes we can get bogged down by everything that we have to do. We are parents, we've got work, we've got all of this stuff. But if it comes down to doing the dishes or spending some time together, sorry, mom, 
I'm going to spend some time together and, and put on some music and dance or laugh or, or you know, do what we need to do to, to sort of connect with each other. Uh, and just picking up on the intimacy issue, I think a lot of times, you know, we only think of intimacy in terms of what happens physically between a couple. But I think there's a level of intimacy that comes with honesty, that comes with vulnerability. And so I think if couples make a habit of prioritizing those kinds of values between each other and being able to really tell someone, just, just think about that, being able to tell someone anything about yourself um, and having them see you, accept you, hear you and embrace you, that really contributes to a level of intimacy and connection that, um, you know, is great to experience in, in your marriage. That's good. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So let's see what our audience is saying. And by the way, if you've got a question for Andrew and Julian or Duane and Shanika, please go ahead and type it in the comments and we, we will take some questions tonight if you've got questions. Uh, Natalie says, indeed, God has to be at the forefront. So I think everyone is agreeing that, you know what, um, God has to be at the forefront of this. And Shirley said, yes, love and celebrate each other every day. Yeah. Valentine is a construct love should be unconditional constant and consistent right on cheryl Ch shirley i did it again <laughs> right on, shirley. you've got that all right let's see what we have here esme says um it's putting god at the forefront of the relationship so i think what our guests are really saying is that god has to be at the foundation of our relationship it makes sense because god is love shirley says yep humor is good and um, Zamal said, that's exactly right. You must be purposeful on a daily basis, like the watering of a plant, making the decision to be present with various touch points throughout the day. All right. Awesome, everyone. So Duane and Shanika, I'm Shanika. I'm going to go back to you. Based on your experience, what would be the single most important advice would you give to other newlyweds? Do I go on you start, Dwayne? First, you go first. Um, I would say, and it, and it speaks to what what um Andrew shared when he talked about his journey to um realizing in its fullness that Julian was the one. Is I think it's so important that you do that personal work, that you really make sure that you are ready that you are, are, are complete and whole to make that step. And it's funny, our story is, you know, we met going on five years ago and I saw Shanika um, from a romantic perspective, even though we were both in different situations. And from time to time, I would playfully, you know, say, hey, what's going on, <laughs> you know? And she would always be like, no, I just see you as a friend. And not knowing and not, realizing that she was going through her own process and we we now we can look back and say that and realize that god was not allowing her to see me as a potential future husband until she had done the work that she needed to do and until she was ready to take that step and it's 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 interesting because my story is similar but without realizing on the level that she she realized it because i would see her and think yeah, because of our friendship that we would be good, but I know I wasn't ready yet. And I remember a year ago, I was talking about that neither one of us, neither one of us was ready yet. God was doing a work in her, God was doing a work in me. And it wasn't until we were both ready that God like opened her eyes and really allowed me to be able to come into her view and say, yeah, this is, this is who I have for you. This is what I've been preparing for you. But we both had to go through our separate journeys and get to a place of whole individually before we, we could become whole together. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Awesome, awesome. All right, any thoughts on that, uh, Andrew and Julianne? Thoughts on advice that we would uh, give people? Yes. Okay. Um, I would just say that, um, you know, I echo some of what has been shared. I would also say, you know, we know from many Christians know the scripture, how can two walk together unless they agree in Amos 3.3. 3. Um, I think a lot of times when we are on the road or on the journey, hoping to prepare ourselves for marriage, we don't take enough time to discover uh, whether or not we agree, you know, and to what extent do we agree? And so what happens is we get married 
and we discover we don't agree <laughs> on many, <laughs> many things, right? And so I think if I were talking to someone who was uh, contemplating marriage, I would say, do the, do the work and put in the time to discover who you are so that you can also give someone else the relevant information to discover whether or not they truly agree with you in the areas that matter. Because at the end of the day, um, marriage is a mirror that will just reflect what is there and magnify what is there in each person. And so you really have to be committed. You really have to have a strong sense of who you are um, and have a strong sense of where you agree with one another in order to, to make a really great go at it. So that would be my advice. That's good. I just want to add to that. We, we did an episode with uh, Reverend uh, Marva Tyndale for a podcast last season. And uh, she gave me, uh, gave us a, a depiction of marriage that I never thought about before. She said, marriage is, is like a crucible. Yeah. Um, and, you know, nobody thinks about marriage as a thing that you're going into to be broken down, to be melted down um, and then reconstituted yeah. and rebuilt. Um, but, but that's what it is, right? It's, it's uh, a willingness to go into this relationship um, and, and have your mindset that you're going to be changed and grow from it, um, not that you're trying to change other people. Um, yeah. So yeah. So it's be, a, ready, be ready be for ready. that, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting, that, that's so interesting. So let's see what our audience is saying. Sharon is saying a family who pray together will stay together. And let me see, Natalie says, daily reassurance, enjoy doing things together, having date nights, which we heard, and stay in prayer, which we've heard. But you know what? what? What if the person is not a Christian? What if the person, as Christian, we know the word and we can go to the word, but what if the person is, is not a Christian? What if the person doesn't know Jesus Christ? How would we have that dialogue with that person? I don't know if you've come across that, um, Andrew and Julian. Um, I would say, you, you know, if you are if you're married to someone or in a relationship with someone who is not a Christian and, and doesn't profess those values, it doesn't prohibit you from creating an environment where those values are displayed. And I, and I think that that has the potential uh, to draw them in to that faith. Right. So um, I would just say and I ask wives all the time to contemplate the question, what is it like being married to me? Um, you know, it's helpful if you would ask yourself that question every now and then along the journey because you assume that you are the best thing since sliced bread and you're the best wife but if you really stop and ask yourself the question and ask your spouse the question what is it like being married to me you might discover that the environment that you're creating even as a christian is not necessarily christ-like and so um if you do get that feedback or if you do have what i would i would consider that an opportunity not necessarily a bad thing um but again i'm going to take us back to how can two walk together unless they agree so it's, it's better upfront to make sure that you agree and that you uh, agree on faith and issues of faith. But if you do, or if you are in a situation or you do find yourself in that kind of, kind of a situation, display the values of Christ and, and, and continue to do so until you draw them in by a love. So. Yes. All right. I've got a question. I'm, I'm not sure who we, anyone can take this one. Tasha Gay is asking, what about persons who are in different religion? How can that work? Wow. I have to take that. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, um, Julia Andrews spoke to it. it. It's it's how can two agree? If you if you you're already on opposite ends of the spectrum. If, if I if I have a different faith from you and our faiths don't align, you've got bigger problems right there. So I, I don't know how to talk Yeah, one. but but I would also I would still say that you know faith is important and faith. Um, even though you you may have two different belief systems or, or or faith, I think you know the fact that you have faith means that you are anchored in something, and there has to be some common ground. Mm -hmm. So I would say yeah. start by discovering what is the common ground. What are what are the areas that we do agree on, or our two aspects of faith do agree, and start from there. Um, mm -hmm. Have a loving conversation about that for as long as it takes. Uh, in order for in order for you to get to a place where you both feel um, that your faith is recognized, appreciated, respected, um, because at the end of the day, if you are already in that situation, I would not encourage anyone to say, "Well, because of this, then we have to abandon ship." I think we can um, still rely on God to bring us together um, in the way that uh, we should be. Right. So find agreement again. 
Okay, perfect. So I'm going to ask the viewers um, if you could just type your thoughts, your suggestions, or your comments on that question, it, which is, what about persons who are in different religion? How can that work? So go ahead and just share your thoughts and your comments on that question in the in the comments box. I want to ask this question because I heard a, a conversation today. I was in conversation dialogue with someone today, and the person said, I am um, discovering more and more who my husband is, and I'm learning new things. Now that's interesting because you really don't know the person to the extent when you just got married. And there are some things that you're gonna discover. I mean, the person can change throughout the marriage as yeah. you age, you know, things change. So how do you handle that new discovery? Because in some cases I've heard of couples who can't handle the change, the, the throwing of the socks, in the hallway annoys them. <laughs> the leaving of stuff on, on the counter annoys them. And that's a change that you never planned for at the start. How do you handle that? How do you handle the changes in personalities as you grow older <laughs> together? I think, I think <laughs> you do, okay, good. I'll share mine and then you can correct me. Yeah. Um, I think, <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on. Dwayne yeah. and Shanika, you're laughing. Is, is does that on your bell? We'll come back to well, you. We're, we're, we're newly went, so it's a good question for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. yeah. No, I think, you know, first of all, the mindset needs to be that this is this marriage, this relationship is going to be a continual evolution. This is going to be a continual growth. So you should already be coming into it with a mindset for change, how to adapt to change and, you know, uh, and grow yourself as you watch the other person uh, evolve and grow. So if you don't have that, I'd say first get to the mindset of accepting change because that's a part of life. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Yeah. And I would say, you, you know, it, the short answer to the question is you handle the change with compassion. I think a lot of times we don't realize that um, we take it for granted that just because we're married to someone and we're discovering something about them that they have known this about themselves mm -hmm. the entire mm -hmm. time. And sometimes they are discovering the thing about them the at the same time. time that you are discovering the thing. And so I think compassion is really necessary. Um, the way that you approach uh, reflecting another person to themselves um, goes a long way in terms of how you manage the change together. Because mm -hmm. You are on one side of it, you know, you are on one side of the discovery now, but they will be on the other side. You'll be on the other side where they'll be discovering something about you. So the way that you would want your spouse to approach something that they're not necessarily happy with or, you know, proud of when it comes to you is the way that you should extend grace to them in um, in negotiating the change or, or speaking about the change or letting them know how the change is impacting you. Yeah. Awesome. Newlyweds, did you have any comments or, or you're looking forward to the day when you already have the tip ahead of time? How to handle this? <laughs> Honestly, I think it's a phenomenal question. I think, um, and I think Julianne answered it amazing in that I think we have grace for each other. I'm sure there's stuff that, that, that absolutely annoys the heck out of my wife that I do. But one thing I love about her is that she she has not, not not so much in her words but in her actions extended so much grace to me because i know i'm far from perfect and i know there are things about me that probably annoy here like right now i'm looking at my desk and she's very organized and my desk is what i call organized chaos and so <laughs> you see your face right now so i know sometimes she'll come in and everything else is put together and then my desk is a mess and she's probably like mm. but she never makes me feel bad about that she'll She'll come and she'll probably clean up and she knows tomorrow I'll mess it up again. But it, I think it's that having that grace for the other person because I know there's there's things on the other side where she knows probably annoys the heck out of me, but I never make her feel bad about it because I understand that we're just coming together and we're figuring out our own rhythm, our own dance. Because I had my dance before we got married and she had her dance before we got married. And now we're doing this two-step together. And so it's we're getting our own rhythm and figuring out, okay, how are we going to run our household? How are we going to, you know, navigate certain aspects of the relationship? So it's having that grace for each other and having that, you know what? I understand the big picture. I understand we're on a marathon. We're not on a sprint. So I'm probably not going to get it right the first time you, you say, hey, I don't like this or that. 
and know that, you know what, we're building towards something bigger. So there's room for each other to make those mistakes and not and not feel like the other person's gonna be like, oh, I'm giving up on you or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and another thing that I would even put out there is in the past, you would, in past relationships for myself, I would always like pick on something if it bugs me so much. And now when I'm looking at this relationship and how we are together, typically if something annoys me so much, I'm just gonna either take care of it myself or if it's something that's repeat, I'll talk to him about it. But the next thing I do say to myself is I'm like, God, is this something that I need to really press on right now? Like I ask God first before I say something because yeah. sometimes if something bugs you so much at that moment, you're gonna respond how you're feeling at that moment. So most of the times I will be like, all right, God, like, give me, give me that compassion or give me that, what's the word? Um, grace. Yeah, grace. Give me that grace right now so that I don't respond in a way that could be hurtful to him. And that's like the advice I would tell anybody is to bring it to God first, as small as it could be, if it's socks on the floor or the desk being a mess still bring it to God because at the end of the day, you do not want that like resentment building up. No, right. And then it gets to that point where you're just angry about it all the time. And the other person doesn't even know that, what you're angry about. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. Great if, answer. If, if I can add something to that just really quickly, um, I just want to offer to people practically that uh, sometimes, you know, we, we think it, change comes and we don't have the capacity to handle this change or we don't have the capacity to handle this thing about our spouse. Um, but in our church family and uh, on our job and in our family of origin, yeah. we extend so much grace. And sometimes yes. we come home to the spouse and it's like, I'm exhausted and I don't have the capacity for you and, and to do this. But I would love for people to really think about being intentional about reversing that. You know, a lot of times, um, like there's a pastor that um, said to us once, you know, if your Christianity doesn't work at home, don't go out there and pretend that mm -hmm. you, you can put it into action, <laughs> right? So the first place is in your house. And so if you if, if you really practice um, extending grace and compassion to each other within the marriage, then it only serves to spill over out there. I, I think that that's well said. That, mm -hmm. that I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. That that's an excellent point because we'll be quick to give grace and extend compassion and understanding to people outside of our home. Well, let's do the same thing at home because that's where it begins. Yes. Right? Well said. Well said. Well said. Betty says, "I like that marriage is a continued evolution." And Sharon says, "Well, let's pray to God for humbleness." Mm -hmm. And uh, Joyce says. Change takes place in every one of us. So we have to be compassionate with each other and communicate. Well said. Thank you for your feedback. So let me go to my final question. Uh, Andrew and Julianne, what tools, <laughs> strategies, or advice would you give our viewers to help them navigate their relationships, whether they're mar married, dating, or courting? And I'm going to ask you, what's the difference between dating and courting? So you can either start with that first and then... The advice, because that's a, that's a popular topic, right? Am I yeah, dating? Yeah, Am I yeah. courting? What's the difference in your view? So, I mean, in our view, I think dating has no intention to it. Courting is 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 you know On really to marriage. Yes, you you set your intention that that is something that you are doing in order to get married. Um, Andrew and I don't necessarily subscribe to the concept of dating <laughs> as it is out there. We say that often because, again, our experience is that. Um, it is better to develop friendships with people and let God illuminate for you which friend is really more than a friend. Right. Um, so, so I'll start with that. I think in terms of um, the advice, I would say that you need to be looking for and you need to be nurturing in yourself a certain degree of self-awareness. Yes. So that is one of the things that is neglected, that people don't put a lot of emphasis on and they don't look for in another person. But that is one of the things that really, we believe, contributes to an excellent marriage. It's a person's ability to be self-aware. Yeah. And the way that it serves you in a marriage is if there is something that your spouse is pointing out, if you are self-aware enough, you will be able to agree, yes, you know what? You're right about that. That yeah. is true. Yeah. I am aware of that, right? And so 
um, self awareness would be one thing, and mm -hmm. I and I would encourage people to do absolutely everything that they can do to make themselves proficient in communication. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I say that, yeah. recognizing at the same time that for every couple, your communication style and your communication needs um, will be unique to the right. relationship and to the couplehood. Right. But if you you can get yourself well ahead of the game if you practice it doesn't take marriage. Don't wait for marriage to be the place where you learn communication. Right. You have a family that you came from. You have brothers and sisters or aunties and uncles or a mother and a father and friends. And you can learn to be a proficient communicator in those other relationships right. before it comes to marriage. Those yeah. are the two things, yeah. communication and self-awareness. And the self-awareness helps you to self-evaluate the feelings that you have. Communication helps you to articulate them. Yes. So they work yeah. hand in hand. Wow, beautiful. Self-awareness and communication. I've got one last question we're going to take, and I think I'm going to give that to Wayne and Shanika. And this is, do you think persons who are married or are about to be married should attend marriage sessions? Yes. One thousand <laughs> percent. And, and, and we have the privilege of being on with our marriage counselors. Andrew and Julianne did our marriage premarital counseling and Okay, hold on, hold on, Dwayne. So let's, yep. let's see if they were good students, all right? Let's <laughs> see You're in evaluation mode now. <laughs> Are you asking us? No, 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 no. I'm asking you to evaluate them now. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. 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 It's early days still, but we have a lot of hope. But, they, but the, right now, they're the, the head of your class. They're doing fantastic. Yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead, Dwayne and Tonica. Well, we we had we had phenomenal um, instructors, and 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 why I say it's it's so important to do that is because the program that we went through it really exposes you and and opens your mind up to things that you otherwise would not think of mm -hmm. going into marriage, and so having someone who is seasoned and and understands the different things that you can fall into in marriage, good and bad really helps you to, to have a clear picture going in because we go in as you know we're so in love and we're so you know in the butterflies and in, the, in our halo of, of love that there's things that you miss yeah. and then you go in unprepared and then things happen and it throws you completely off mm -hmm. so going through premarital you know they were able to to have us look at certain aspects of the relationship that we otherwise would not have looked at and we were able to have certain conversations and to um, Julianne's point of figuring out all the, all the levels that we agree on, we are able to agree on a lot of things that we otherwise didn't even think of. Oh, that's that's something that we need to right. to talk about. Yeah. You know, so I think premarital is an absolute must. Absolute must. All right. Well, there you have it. Premarital is an absolute must. I also had premarital counseling when my husband and I were getting married, and I can say it is value added. So if that's you out there and you're thinking about it, I would also say, yes, it's it's something that you should do. It helps you to discover things that you perhaps wouldn't have discovered until later and also helps you to bring about that self-awareness. So it is good. You should go ahead. Now, we come to the moment before I give my final close in. We come to the moment where Duane, our gifted poet, is going to bless us and entertain us with, uh, is it an original, Duane? Yes, it is. It's an original poetry written specifically for you on this Valentine's weekend. Take it away, Duane. Okay, so as my wife shared earlier, we are not what I would say pro-Valentine's Day. I get the idea around it, but um, we believe very much in showing that love every day. So the piece is kind of centered around that. So... Um, Dear Valentine, I regret to inform you that it's over and I'm breaking up with you. I mean, you're cool, fun loving and make me feel good when you come around. But if I'm honest, your love is toxic. You see, much like an absent father who comes around on birthdays and Christmas, you provide little more than an emotional high. You come bearing gifts accompanied by, accompanied by kind words written in fancy cards. But like a drug, your high wears off and I'm left feeling low. You see, your love is momentary, but I need a love that's extraordinary. The kind of love that I can touch and feel daily. The kind of love that doesn't need an occasion to express how it feels to me. 
Unfortunately, that's not who you are. You're for the moment. You show up for the hype of the crowd, for the likes and comments on social media, then poof, you're gone and I'm left singing the song. Tell me, have you seen her? Well, I'm done, I'm gone. You can keep that kind of love. I deserve better. A love that's present and intentional. A love that doesn't need an occasion to express feeling or emotion. We're flowers on a Wednesday just because it's a Wednesday is a thing. We're kind words left on pillows and in lunch bags are commonplace. Candlelight dinners and romantic walks are unplanned. Just a natural overflow of how you feel. Yeah, that's the kind of love I'm talking about. That's the kind of love that's real. So Valentine's, this is the end. I'm moving on. You're no longer welcome here. You've been replaced by a real one. Wow. wow. All right. Yes. So the message is Valentine's should be every day. That's and right. that, that is so fitting because I want to talk about love is a language of heaven. It is the core of all relationships. Love was born in heaven and love flowed out of heaven. And one John 4 tells us that God is love. And because of God's divine love, John 3, 16 tells us that he sent his only son into this world so that by the death of Jesus Christ, all of us might have eternal life. This is what I called real love. It is not our love for God, but his love for you and I. A love that is so powerful that Paul said in Romans 8, verse 35 and verse 39, who shall separate us from the love of God? Nothing will, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So on this Valentine's weekend, I want you to know that God loves is every day. He loves you every day. It's unconditional. It, it bears no wrong. He forgives you. His arms are wide open. That's his agape love for you. Now let's understand that the father loves us. Then in exchange in our earthly relationships, then we, our love has to be an attitude that govern our lifestyle. Love and relationship, it's not automatic. Love and relationship can fade away. The Bible tells us that it can be abandoned. Therefore, as children of God, let us make it our aim. As Hebrews 10 verse 24 says, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. And with that says, I want to leave you with my top five intentional acts of love. Number one, <coughs> verse 14, 16, verse 14, do everything in love. And so be motivated by love 24-7, 365 days a year. Number two, Romans 12, verse 10. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. And what I mean by that, what the Bible means by that, not me, is to outdo each other in showing honor in your relationships. Number three, Ephesians 4, verse 2. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Patience, it is a fruit of the spirit. Number four, first Peter 4, verse 8. Above all, above faith, above hope, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. And number five, Proverbs 4, verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do, flows from it, meaning be cautious. Be cautious as to what you allow your eyes to see and what your ears to hear and ingest into your soul. Because if you ingest hate, out of your heart will flow hate. If you ingest resentment, out of your heart will flow resentment. But if you ingest love, out of your heart will flow love. And so that's my top five intentional acts of love that I wanted to share with you on this Valentine's weekend. And so before we wrap up, I just want to say a prayer over every person that's watching, whether you're married, you're in a relationship or you're single. And it's, it's very simple. And so I'm just asking the Lord God today from our lips to your ears, we love you, Jesus Christ. You first loved us. 
And so we are here today and we want to love you back with all our hearts. We thank you, God, for loving us unconditionally. We thank you, God, that there's nothing that we could do wrong that could separate us from your love. No heights, no depth, nothing, God, can separate us from your love. And so in the name of Jesus, my prayer today for everyone who is watching, God, is that you baptize us afresh right now with your agape love. Place in our hearts, God, a deep adoration for your beauty and your majesty. And bind us together in our individual relationships with a cord that cannot be broken and cannot be penetrated. And I ask you in the name of Jesus to cause your love to abound more and more, increase and overflow for each one and everyone else in the name of Jesus. And I ask you to cover every couple, cover every single person, cover every person who is a widow, who have lost their husband, who don't have their husband or their wives on this weekend. Cover them, Jesus Christ, with your precious blood. Be their comfort be their guide, and be the love that holds them together in the midst of whatever they're going through, because your love is agape. It's unconditional. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And thank you, Duane, for that lovely poem, which just fed right in, because love is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that we have to live. It's not February 14th. It's not Easter. It's not December, Christmas, it's a lifestyle. It's a foundation upon which all our relationships, whether it's a, it's a spouse or whether it's a coworker, whether it's your neighbor, it's a foundation. God is love. So love has to be the foundation for everything we do. So Andrew and uh, Julianne, final words, and then I'll also ask you to share how our viewers can get in touch with you. Final words, and then let us know how we can get in touch with you. <clears throat> final words. Oh, man. It was a pleasure and an honor being on the show with you today. So thank you so much for inviting us. Uh, Dwayne, that was a fantastic uh, piece. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, I mean, I think, I hope and I pray that all of the information that was shared today, you know, the, the scripture and the, the nuggets of wisdom, I hope that, tools. the practical tools, I hope that um, they're picked up and applied and used and that uh, marriages um, and relationships are enriched and empowered because of this uh, this show. So thank you yeah. for the opportunity. Awesome, and how can how can the viewers reach out to you if they need to? Because you do, let's, let's talk a little bit about what you do, you do marriage counseling, how can yeah. they connect with you? They can connect with us um, online at thejameses.ca. Everything is there. <laughs> yep, yep. Thejameses.ca, J-A-M-E-S. Yes. 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 <laughs> dot .ca. Dot .ca. Yeah. All right. There we go. So you can go to their website. You can see the services they offer, and you can connect with them. Over to you, Duane and Shanika. Final word, and how can the viewers get in touch with you as a newlywed? Somebody may just want to ask you a question <laughs> or financial advice. Well, as you guys know, as your audience knows, I am a financial advisor. So if you need financial services, um, you can reach me um, at my IG page or my Facebook page, which is both the same. I am WFG underscore Dwayne Beckford. Um, and for all of your photography needs, my amazing wife is a photographer and she can share her. <laughs> it's captured by Shawnee everywhere. So my website, capturedbyshawnee.com. Facebook and Instagram, Captured by Shawnee. And yeah, that's it. Awesome. <laughs> if you're thinking of getting married, there you go, right? You have a mm -hmm. financial advice. Everything. You've got your <laughs> yeah. marriage counselor and you've got your photographer. Whoa, you <laughs> have a package. And, and your finance is taken care of. Yeah. All <laughs> right. Well, thank you both so very much. Um, I'm, you know, it was a pleasure. Thank you for that poem, Duane. Awesome. Shanika, thank you. Andrew and Julie James from the Love James podcast, thank you for coming on today. It was my pleasure and my honor to have you on the show and for you to share those nuggets with, with our audience. So thank you so very much. Thanks for having us. Thanks for thank you. Awesome. And to my blessed viewers, thank you for joining us for today's show. And please remember to like, share this broadcast and just spread the good word about the love this weekend. I mean, we got to spread it 365 days, but you know what? Let's put a little extra touch to it this week. And remember, we live to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. So from the One Word crew to our global EFAM, 
Have a blessed weekend and a happy Valentine's weekend. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Take care.